Hey, what's up everyone? Miss Valley Master for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council here, going to show you a deck profile from my most recent deck that I made with the help of uh, another friend of mine on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, and that is my Divine Dragoonity Harpies, as I call them, because it uses Divine Wind, plus Harpies, plus Dragoonity, so yeah, seems like a fitting enough name. Um, I can't believe I really didn't think of this before. Somebody else, it was this uh, other person that suggested using Divine wind along with the uh, Dragoonity stuff and so I after hearing the idea and thinking oh I'm, I'm so stupid you know I know so much about the divine wind build and how to use divine wind and I know so much about communities I really should have just thought to combine the two now especially now you know after the ban list came out because I mean it, before the ban list there really wasn't a need but now there is and I can't believe I didn't think of this myself but he suggested the idea and I took off with it. Uh, basically what what he told me was I was in the middle of a duel, an intense duel, Miss Valley Harpies vs. Fire Fist, which I ended up winning, but um, yeah, near the beginning he sent me a message thing and I didn't really have time to read his stuff or, or uh, you know, chat with him. So I said, okay, I'm in the middle of a duel, but tell me about this great new Dragonity deck idea you say you came up with and I'll read it after I'm done. So periodically during the duel I would see new comments being added and then by the end I looked over and he said well you know I was experimenting with Dancer and Harpy Lady and Phalanx basically I would activate Divine Wind summon out Dancer, activate Elegant Egotist, bring out a Lady bounce Dancer back to hand, summon out something else like a Queen or you know whatever Harpy Lady Monster from your hand except for Channeler uh, because Channeler can't work with Phalanx and then he would use Divine Wind's ability bring out a Phalanx from his deck and then you've suddenly got two Wing Beast type monsters and a Phalanx, which allows you to sink into Vajrayana, Gay Jurg, bring out a Tum, and go into all the usual large Dragoonity plays. So after he told me about that, I was thinking, oh, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can just kind of mesh the two together. Because um, even though he came up with a terrific idea, I didn't like a couple of his ideas. Because, I mean, he was saying something about he was running Transma. Uh, transmodify with Legionnaire to go into Dancer, and that's kind of a decent way to bring out Dancer, I suppose. But if that's really the only reason you're running Legionnaire, it doesn't seem like a good, a very good reason to me. Because you can use Phalanx with Legionnaire and two level 5 Synchros, but there's really not room in the extra deck. I, I'm already so tight on space in the extra deck as it is. And uh, you can kill off Legionnaire after you equip it to, uh, or you can kill off a Phalanx after equipping it to Legionnaire to pop a face-up monster on the field, but it just didn't seem like the best idea necessarily, in my opinion. So what I decided to try and do was use Transmodify to uh, you go from a Channeler, Dancer, Harpy Lee, whatever, into Dragoonity Primus Pilus. My first build had these six cards right here, so my deck was very tight on space. But, um, you know, I was trying that idea for a little bit, and it was okay, but even though I love the concept, because you can then, after you summon Dragoonity Primus Pilus, you can use his ability to equip a Dragoonity Corsesca from your deck to him. And then if you destroy an opponent's monster by battle, you can fetch a monster with the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, same type and attribute, thanks to Dragoonity Corsesca's ability here. So you can add a Channeler, a Dancer, uh, Dukes, you know, whatever you need, you can add it to your hand. But unfortunately, even though it can give you a little bit of card advantage, it doesn't seem worth it for taking up six cards in your deck. Because unfortunately, in the end, I was like, well, it's taking up six cards. Those are six cards that could be other things that are more useful, like Pet Dragon. I forgot to put in Pet Dragon in my first build, which resulted in a, in a kind of a messy combo in my very first duel with this deck. So I forgot to put in Pet Dragon. I don't believe I put in Darkness Metal. I think I accidentally left out Darkness Metal as well. I didn't have the Forbidden Lances. I'm not even sure I had the Swallows Nest yet. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking those are the six cards that were replaced by these. Or it might have been one Magical Hats uh, and one Breakthrough Skill. I don't remember for certain. But in any case, it was kind of a cool idea, but it didn't work out. So this is the deck I do have now. Let me go over this. Got Darkness Metal because it's searchable easily enough via uh, Heretic King of a Tum. You got Harpy's Pet Dragon. 
at one. You got three Harpy Channeler because Harpy Channeler is way too good to not run. It doesn't combine with Phalanx like I already said, but it's still too good to not run. You can always, um, there's a lot of times where I'll bring out a Channeler plus I'll bring out, say, a Lady. I use Lady and Flanks to go into Vajrayana, and then Vajrayana will go into Stardust or Crimson Blader. And then Channeler will use her ability, drop something from my hand, bring out a Harpy's Pet Dragon, and I go into Drago Sack or Big Eye. So Channeler is just way too good to not run at 3. Harpy Lady, you have to run at 3. Every time I try dropping it down to 2, it always ends badly. So you always run at 3. Running two Dragonity Dukes. Out of all the monsters in here, this guy is probably the least necessary. I'm really leaving it in at 2 because it adds a little more Dragonity flavor, uh, mostly. I mean, there, you know, you can always bring it out from your hand via Harpy Dancer if you want. Even if you don't use his ability, you know, you can always do that. And then you can special summon out Flanks from the deck and then go into Vajrayana that way. Or if a Flanks is in the grave, then Dukes just gives you a lot more potential if you do run him in here. So yeah, for right now I'm running him at 2. 2 Dancer, Queen at 1 because her Queen is the 1 you can really afford to cut back by a little bit. I mean, I like running Queen at 2, and whenever I cut a Harpy target down to 1, like Pet Dragon or Queen, you know, it, it it's usually less beneficial than... Then more so, you know, because it's like, well, if you draw into it suddenly, there's a la there's one fewer decent targets in the deck for something like Hysteric Sign. If you draw into Queen, now you've got to search out either a Hunting Ground or a Harpy Lady in addition to your Dancer and Channeler, you know. So I like running two Queen, and I would like running two Pet Dragon, except I hate drawing into both Pet Dragons at once, you know. That just clogs up the hand, so bad. All right, so we got one Queen. We got one Garuda. Um, if I if I really could have everything I wanted, I would probably run to Garuda in addition to a Tempest in here. I would love to have a Tempest in here, but I don't have the space. So running the uh, one Garuda because it is searchable via Gay Jerg. Same with, thing with the Zephyros, and Zephyros allows you to go for a bunch of big plays with your Dragonities. Or if you want to play slightly more conservatively, you can use Zephyros to bounce back a, your Divine Wind to hand, since you always want to put Divine Wind back in your hand now that the new ban list is out and this is at 1. You always want this back in your hand if at all possible. So you can bounce it back to your hand, bring out Zephyros, and then if you have a Flanks on the field or a Baby Rock, Baby Rock can allow you to go into Vulcan the Divine. But if you've got a Flanks, you can go into a Vajrayana. So you can always play a little more conservatively instead of bouncing a Darkness Spell back to hand. And actually, I'm considering cutting out the Darkness Metal and putting in the Tempest instead. But for right now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. But I am considering perhaps doing that. Because, you know, my tendency with this deck is to have the field get full of monsters really quickly. And then suddenly having a Darkness Metal isn't such a terrific thing, you know. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. For right now, it's doing alright. It, it, I just, I still gotta fine-tune the deck a little bit. Alright, so we got two Flanks. Um, could run it at three. The thing is then if you draw into multiples, it's a little bit of a bad thing. For right now, two seems to be working just fine. And the other thing is that if you do use up both, and you've got Dukes in your deck, you can still uh, search this out via Gay Derek. Um, so for that reason, I mean, I, I, nece I wouldn't necessarily cut it out completely. I might put it down to one, but I probably wouldn't cut out Dukes completely. Because, you know, you can always use Gay Dirk's effect, add a Dukes to hand, and then discard off something that is less valuable than that. Let's say you uh, have a Harpy Lady in your hand who you really don't want. You can discard the Harpy Lady, keep Dukes in hand. And then if both flanks are in the grave, you know, you can uh, get it via Dukes. Of course, you, if you run three flanks, you won't have that problem then. But like I said, running three flanks has the tendency to be a mediocre hand if you open up with multiples. Uh, we got one Baby Rock because it's searchable via Gay Dirk, and it allows you to go into a lot of bigger plays. I'm going to show a video of a, a replay of a duel after I'm done with this deck profile in the same video, and you'll see uh, why he's so good if you don't aren't aware of what he does already. All right, we got three Terraforming. I, I feel like you have to run three to have a decent shot at getting into the Divine Wind of Mist Valley. It can also search out Harpy's Hunting Ground if you need it to. And speaking of which, we run two of that, we run two Hysteric Sign, two Swallow's Nest, 
Swallow's Nest is so incredibly good. I mean, not only does it allow you to get around things like fiendish chain and breakthrough skill and all kinds of things, all kinds of things like that, just like Forbidden Lance does, as long as it's a, as it's a wing beast type monster, of course. Not only that, but if you open up with something you really don't especially like, like a Harpy Lady One or a Dukes, and you've got Divine Wind in your hand or a Terraforming in your hand, you can always use Swallow's Nest, get rid of whatever monster you don't want, and bring out a Dancer in a, in its place. And then you've got the pieces all set up to go into your Divine Wind place. We got two Forbidden Lance for everything other than Wing Beasts, or to use on your Wing Beasts like your Dancer if you really need to. One Elegant Egotist, one Zone, because uh, Zone plus Divine Wind is so good. Um, let's say you already have access to a Hysteric Sign, so you don't need Magical Hats to fetch out a Hysteric Sign anymore. What you can do with the, with the Magical Hats is you can bring out a Divine Wind and a Zone from your deck and set them face down on the field, you know, as monsters. And as long as the Divine Wind gets killed first or at the same time, Zone's effect will activate when it's destroyed, allowing you to add Divine Wind back to your hand. Now, if Zone gets killed first, then you're out of luck. Which is why, if you can, you should wait until after all of your opponent's monsters have already attacked just before they leave the battle phase going to main phase 2 you can activate the magical hats and search these two out or if they've simply got one monster attacking you can go ahead and take the chance you know magical hats bring out both because the odds of them attacking into the zone first is only one third the chance you know not a very good chance so you can always do that but in any case you know zone is pretty good for beyond divine wind or if Divine Wind has already been sent to the graveyard, you can use Magical Hats, search out a zone, plus something else like, say, a Fiendish Chain, or a Hysteric Sign if you really want. You know, whatever. And then when Zone gets killed, you get to add Divine Wind back to your hand. So yeah, that's why I'm running one zone. Um, we got three Magical Hats, because it's so good getting to your Hysteric Sign and your Divine Wind, if you've got the option to go with, you know, do this combo. We got one Book of Moon because it's just such a good uh, stun card. Two Breakthrough Skill. This might eventually get replaced with Fiendish Chain, I'm not sure. But right now I'm doing the Breakthrough Skill because you can bring it out with Magical Hats and then use it during your turn on your opponent's turn, which helps out a lot, actually. A lot of times that helps out. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, I I really like running Fiendish Chain in the regular Dragonity deck because Zephyros can bounce the Fiendish Chain back to your hand. But the thing is, in here, if you're going to use Zephyros on anything other than a monster card like Darkness Metal, you're probably going to want to use it on your Divine Wind. So, yeah, it's, Fiendish Chain wouldn't be quite as helpful in that regard. So, yeah, for right now, I'm running the two Breakthrough Skill. The other thing is that, unlike Fiendish Chain, Breakthrough Skill cannot be MST'd, and that's a pretty big thing. Alright, we got the one Bombless and the one Compulse, because those are kind of staples. Okay, as far as the extra deck goes, we got Drago Sack. I don't like it when I'm going for my Dragonity plays. I don't like having Drago Sack. But the thing is that when you don't go for your Dragonity plays, often Channeler dropping a Lady or a Queen and going for Pet Dragon and making a Drago Sack is your best play. So for right now, I feel like I do have to run it. Although, you know, if I eventually get to the point where I'm making a lot more Dragonity plays than not, I might cut this guy out. Because, you know, he just clogs up the field so quickly, you know. One Big Eye, one Consular Ptolemy M7, one Strike Bouncer. This guy might get cut for a Gaia Dragon, because like I said, I'm fine-tuning the deck still. Strike Bouncer is really good if you can go for your biggest, most powerful play, which this deck can do fairly easily, which is why I really want this guy to stay in. The thing is, out of this guy and Consular Ptolemy, Consular Ptolemy is the more useful, I think, out of the two. Of course, King of Tum you would never consider even taking out. But this guy is the slightly less useful out of the two. And Gaia Dragon is so helpful. You can make it over the Atum. Or you can make it with your uh, Channeler and Pet Dragon if you need to. If you really don't want to make a big eye, you can always make Gaia Dragon. So yeah, I'm just so tight on space. I really wish I wasn't so tight on space, but I am. Oh man, we got one Queen Dragon. Jin because it works very well with both the Harpies and Dragoonities. We got one Ice Beast Zero Fine and one Lightning Chidori. Kind of have to put those in Harpies. We got, as far as Synchros go, one Crimson Blader, one Stardust Dragon. I 
had a scrap dragon in here at one point, but and I had cut out one of the Fajrianas, but I quickly discovered that's not such a good thing when you're when you're, you know, using up like at least one Vajrayana, if not two. Um, you know, when you start making your harpy ladies plus blanks, you know, into your synchros, you know, you pretty quickly run out of Vajrayana, so <sighs> cutting it down to two really is not such a good idea. Unless you want to put in more of a harpy flavor in here and less Dragoonity flavoring, if you will, you know. Then you could cut Vajrayana down to two if you want to put in one other, say a Gaga Ga Cowboy or something like that, you know, if there's really another rank four Xyz you really, really want to put in. Or if you really, really want to put in Master of Blades and you're going to cut out Darkness Mel and put in Tempest or something like that, you know, then you could cut out one Vajrayana. But otherwise, if you really want to make a lot of the big Dragonity plays, you know, you kind of have to put in the three Vajrayanas. One Gay Dirk, because he's just a staple in any Divinity deck, and one Vulcan the Divine. Um, I wasn't sure this guy was going to be too terribly helpful this format, and in regular Dragoonities he isn't, if you're going to make the other Dragoonity build that I have, but if you're going to make this build, Vulcan the Divine is actually quite helpful, because um, first of all, if you don't have access to a Flanks, but you do have access to a Baby Rock, you know he's a completely universal you know any two monsters can make him as long as one's a tuner one's a non-tuner but um you know so he's very easy to make but the other thing and the more important point is that if you've got divine wind on the field that you really want to bounce back to your hand you can summon out vulcan to the divine bounce back divine wind back to your hand get rid of one of your opponent's face-up cards all right so that's what he's for as far as the side deck goes this is not a side deck these are simply other cards I really would like to add, or I'm considering adding. I really wanted to add these six, but it's just too many cards to to vote to something that kind of helps sometimes, but doesn't usually, you know. Guy Dragon really want to put this guy in. Something is probably going to eventually get cut out for him, and we have to see what it is. Tempest, I'd love to throw in, but for right now, don't have the space to put him in. We'll see. Uh, again, another card I really, really want to put in. Something might end up getting cut out to make room for this guy. We'll have to see. Uh, the third, Dukes. Um, actually, this guy isn't especially necessary, so this guy probably <laughs> barely deserves a spot on this list. Uh, third, Blanks. Uh, second, Queen would love it. Hysteric Party. Oh, man, I really want to put this in, and maybe I will eventually take something out, like if the Forbidden Lances prove to not be too terribly helpful. Because the Swallow's Nest usually draw out, or let me put, sorry, I started to say that incorrectly. Your Dancers or Channelers will usually draw out their Breakthrough Skills or Fiendish Chains if they have them. So the Swallow's Nest helps you get around their uh, Fiendish Chains and Breakthrough Skills and stuff like that. It helps remove those. So if I, it, I discover after several more duels, because I've only dueled with this deck a couple handful of times, you know, but... If I discover that the Forbidden Lances really aren't too critical, I might take them out, put in the Hysteric Parties instead, because they are so, so, so good. The thing is, I decided initially when building the deck that as much as I love these, and as, like, absolutely broken as they can be sometimes, you know, if you get off your Dragoonity plays properly, you should have always always have two to three monsters on the field, two or three big monsters, like Stardust Dragon and Crimson Blader and stuff like that. So you really don't have too much space to bring out Harpy Ladies to your side of the field anyway. And the other thing is, you know, it, it just wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't quite mesh quite as well. Because, I mean, the Forbidden Lances, you know, can protect your Vajrayanas, your Gay Durg, and stuff like that. Whereas Hysteric Parties, you know, wouldn't be helping <laughs> nearly so much in those situations. So, yeah, for right now it's out. I'd love to put it in, but for right now it's out. Same thing with the Fiendish Chain. This might go back in eventually instead of Breakthrough Skill. I have to see before you now. I think the Breakthrough Skills are being more helpful than the Fiendish Chains would be. Alright, so that's the deck profile. I hope you really enjoyed it. It's an absolutely incredible deck in my opinion. I absolutely love Dragoonies and I love the Divine Wind style and I love Harpies. So combining them all together just seemed like a, like a hand in glove. And it's doing extremely well. I mean, I've won, I think, like every duel I've been in, except for one exception, because I opened up kind of badly. So, yeah, it's, it's doing very well for me. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a 
replay so you guys can get an idea of how this works. Alright, so here is the first replay, and actually I changed my mind. I'm going to show both replays assuming they go kind of quick, because, you know, it should only take a few minutes to get through both, and both of them were pretty good. They show different aspects of the deck pretty well and the strengths of and the strengths of it pretty well. Alright, so this guy obviously runs just one pet dragon, so he bounces back my monster to the deck, which is kind of unfortunate because I can't use magical hats now, but oh well. Such is the way things go at times. Alright, so I finally get to a monster, and he had the ability to use his queen to search out a hunting crown, so, yeah. Which he could have then dropped with Summoner Monk to summon out another level 4 monster. I, I would assume he just never felt the need to do that. Um, it actually would have been more advantageous for him, perhaps in a way, because, you know, uh, then he would have had more targets for his hysteric party, you know? But, um, oh well. Didn't do it, so... I get to bring out my breakthrough skill, put it in the grave, which is usually a good thing. Now, for anybody who thinks that, you know, playing a Harpy's Hunting Ground just before you're going to play a Divine Wind isn't such a good thing, I mean, let's say I'm going to summon out a Dancer, nothing else, I didn't have an Elgin Hegatist to bring this out, I was going to summon out a Dancer, after activating this, and then activate Divine Wind over this, well, I consider that a one-for-one, one, just like a Mystical Space Typhoon, basically, so, you know, I don't think it's a waste to play Hunting Ground, even if you know it's going to be going away almost instantly. Now, I decided to for, uh, forbidden Lance this thing, because I would rather keep it on the field, so that I can sync it with, uh, Planks into a Vajrayana, and I don't have my Divine Wind in play yet, so it's not like I can, uh, you know, use Divine Wind's ability after he bounces his back to hand to get out flanks. So yeah, I fiendish chain that, leave it on the field. Go into Shidori, bounce back another one. Well, try to. He kills it. But... Alright, so that's where this one ended. Unfortunately, this one did not go through to completion. He gave up here. He could have activated Divine... They're not Divine, uh, Wrath. I, uh, he already used that card. He could have used Icarus Attack, Tribute it off Queen, killed a couple of things, so I'm not necessarily sure why he gave up quite so soon, but, you know, he was probably going to be going my way anyway, you know. Um, I mean, he could have, um, Icarus Attack killed off both of these. That would have hurt me a little bit. Or he could have waited until I activated Divine Wind and then Icarus Attack on rid of this, got rid of the Divine Wind plus the Dancer. You know, there's a few things he could have done. But of course, if he had tried to kill Dancer, I would have instantly forbidden Lance either way, so it was probably going to go in my favor anyway, but, you know, some people have the tendency to give up a little too soon. Alright, so here's uh, replay number two, and let's swap that view since I was using this build. Always set both magical hats if you have two, because if they have MST, well, you don't want to lose them. So there's really nothing I want to do in this situation. I could have made a Lightning Chidori. You know, I could have made a Lightning Chidori, gotten rid of this, gotten rid of that. But it's like, well, then, you know, I, my Dragoonity plays won't work out quite so well. You know, if something happens, like, let's say he bombless it. Well, then I couldn't, wouldn't have something on the field to use Magical Hats with. So it's like, no, I'll just sit tight, hope he goes to his battle phase on his next turn so I can use my magical hats, which is what happens, which is awesome. Breakthrough skill, ultimate maiden killer. Alright, so now I have the ability to go off on all my big plays. He feet for Ben Lance is this, not really having a choice, it really doesn't matter in any situation, you know. Bring out the Dukes because 
you know, I obviously if I had brought out Channeler, it wouldn't have worked with Blanks. Bring out Dancer wouldn't be such a great idea, so it's like, eh, bring out the Dukes. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do anyway, right? Go into Vajriana, so that's what he'll do. Now, this loop should look familiar to those who know Dragoonities. This is the quite possibly most powerful Dragoonity loop there is, and it's certainly one of my favorites. Quite possibly my very favorite. Because it, it stops almost anything they can do, you know? Now, I could have used Breakthrough Skill on Maiden, but when he activates its ability, but since I have Strike Bounds, you know, why not use that? Inflict more damage to him, you know? This duel doesn't go all the way through either because he uh, surrenders, yeah, right here before I can get in any more attacks, but obviously that would have been game anyway. Dragoonity is so powerful, and now that, you know, Divine Wind is kind of like the new Dra Dragon Ravine way, you know, it helps them go into their synchros nice and easy. So yeah, Dragoonities are certainly not dead. Miss Valley Harpies, certainly not dead. Working together, maybe they'll compete for one of the, like a top, a spot in the top five decks this format. Who knows? But in any case, I absolutely love them and I love playing with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, comment, rate, and subscribe both to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council and uh, to my channel if you like liked this video and you like the other channel videos on my channel. Um, constructive criticism and feedback stuff like that is always accepted and welcomed all right take care everyone miss Valley master signing off